Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, we'll be taking a look at an RX 6800 XT graphics card running on an Intel 10900K with a Z490 motherboard to show you guys the resizable bar is really cool, aka smart access memory. It is quite literally free performance. AMD pushed this technology to the limelight when they announced it would be a base feature of an all AMD platform comprised of a Ryzen 5000 series CPU and an RDNA 2 class GPU. And then Nvidia and Intel quickly scrambled, starting to release press statements that they can actually do this as well, but also, of course, supporting this feature. So in the case of NVIDIA, we will get drive updates next year. And for Intel, they've already started to arm their partners with the appropriate tools for the BIOSes. And so we've got some BIOSes already for Z490 boards, which have already rolled out, including for the Asus board that we're going to be using in this video. But what exactly is smart access memory slash resizable bar? I go deeper into this with the accompanying article of this video. So if you want to check that out, it is, of course, linked in the video description. But the gist is that this feature is part and parcel of the PCIe specification. Smart access memory slash resizable bar, you can use it interchangeably, but uh, SAM, smart access memory, is the term that AMD used. It's kind of their PR term, if you will, a bit like NVIDIA will call ray tracing RTX. Anyway, this is basically designed to get around a limitation that has been imposed on graphics, which dates back, well, let's say a long time, when address space was at a premium. So essentially, when we had 32-bit operating systems and GPUs which didn't have several gigabytes or more of VRAM, it was decided that the system could uh, basically access 256 megabytes of the uh, GPU's memory at a time, which is not awful, but now that we have systems which have absolutely ridiculous amounts of RAM compared to what we had back then, this is obviously started to become a limitation. So now you're having the system be able to access pretty much all of this memory. So you will need to actually update your BIOS for this feature to be enabled on your motherboard. So Z490 motherboards have started to have their BIOSes updated. So you'll need to go to your manufacturer's website, look for your board uh, version, and then obviously see in the change log, most of them do have it uh, quite easily readable, what they've changed from one version to another to see if uh, resizable bar slash smart access memory has been enabled on your board, then you will need to download that BIOS and then update your BIOS on the board and then, well, you're good to go. As a quick aside, um, for updating, generally speaking, I just use the BIOS's own utility. It's quick and easy. So just throw it onto a USB stick, reboot, BIOS update, good to go. Um, there are tons of uh, guides out there. If you're unsure how to do a BIOS update, but um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's have a look at how to enable it on an Asus uh, Z490 Extreme motherboard. Uh, I suspect it's gonna be very similar across a multitude of different boards. To enable this feature, at least in our particular motherboard's case, which is an Asus Z490 Maximus Extreme, you'll need to, well, enter the BIOS and then go to the advanced menu and then next of all click on PCI subsystem settings. You will then be given a couple of different options and you will need to enable above 4G decoding and also, shockingly, <laughs> enable resizable bar support. There is one other small thing you'll need to do um, and that is go to the boot menu and under CSM compatibility, uh, you will need to disable it. So if it's enabled, you will need to disable. And then what I hear you scream? Well, that's it. You just restart your system. What it will do is quickly turn off for just a moment and then turn back on. And then you can log into Windows and you are good to go. That's all you have to do. You don't need to worry about any uh, settings in the graphics cards or, you know, I don't know, like, doing registry hacks or anything like that. It's really that simple. It takes just a few seconds to enable it. And the process, by the way, is similar if you have an X570 uh, motherboard for sake of argument. In other words, it's very similar on the AMD side of things. 
so there is no different process. You have to just find that setting, whether it's resizable bar or smart access memory, depending on what it's called on your specific version of uh, motherboard, and then you just have to enable it. So a quick couple of notes about our testing. We're again using an Intel 10900K. I'm hitting five gigahertz across all cores. So basically I've just locked the clock frequency to there. I'm also using 32 gigabytes of memory. And again, we're using Windows. All of the um, games are on their own uh, SSDs. And of course, uh, we are also using an RX 6800 XT. This is the reference design. It's actually been sent over by AMD for the purposes of review. So thanks very much to AMD. And uh, as also another disclosure, the Intel motherboard and processor were also sent by Intel when Comet Lake actually launched back in the day. And um, yeah, we will be doing much more extensive testing of the RX 6000 series GPUs. Um, but this is the first thing I really wanted to test for you guys because I happen to have a board which was actually uh, supporting this feature and I really have been looking forward to seeing what it's actually capable of on Intel and naturally we'll be also testing it on uh, RX, sorry, on a Ryzen 5000 series processor as well. With that said, let's have a look at the results. Starting things out with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 141 FPS goes to 149 in our 1440p results. And we even gain a couple of FPS too at 4K, which of course is even more important, arguably, since 4K is so demanding to run. Interestingly, our GPU 95%, which was a statistic they give you in the built-in benchmark, goes from 66 to 70, which again is quite a tangible benefit. Shadow of the Tomb Raider with ray tracing enabled, 1440p here, 76 to 79, and we also gain a whole 1 FPS, which is not exactly a big deal, um, with the minimums. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and yeah, I mean, I think that's great. We gain 5 FPS at 4K. Uh, minimums, though, are still pretty low with the built-in benchmark 33 for both the resizable bar on and off. 1440p, 91 goes to 108, and we actually see a similar leap at 1080p as well. This game is really demanding on the GPU, so we go from 115 to 139, and minimums also make a small nudge forward too. I decided to run Time Spy Extreme, and this is one of those examples where Resizable Bar basically does bupkus. The graphics and overall score change literally just a couple of points. I find it interesting that we do have a small point increase here, but it is titchy and it's well within margin of error. Um, so I really, yeah, if if Time Spy streams your thing, I guess you get like two or three extra points. Woohoo! Um, Gears 5, 127 at 1440p goes to 140. That, my friends, is what I consider tangible. And at 4K, 77 FPS, I'm going to round up and down the numbers, of course, goes to 80. So a small, a small benefit, not huge, but, you know, not bad either. But interestingly, the minimums also saw a tangible increase too. So I, I'm i actually really impressed with the performance of Gears, which of course uses a modified UE5, uh, sorry, UE4 engine. Borderlands, uh, 112 at 1440p goes to 120, and at 1080p, 152 to 164, and 4K, 63 to 66. So not much of a benefit with um, with uh, Borderlands at ultra high resolutions. At Horizon Zero Dawn, we also have uh, another case where there is no real difference with uh, enabling or disabling smart access memory. At 4K, we get 71 uh, and with both results, and at 1440p, we get 123 and 124, which is within the margin of error. I also did a manual run of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at 1440p. I didn't uh, try the other resolutions, honestly, but we did gain a few FPS here. So with smart access memory enabled, we have 146.8 versus 142.8, and the min FPS 
rose from 107.2 to 117.8. So there you have it guys, the performance results are what I consider to be very interesting. There is no downside to enabling this, so taking TimeSpy again as an example, there is no performance loss, you just don't gain anything, but in titles where you do gain performance, for example, um, Assassin's Creed, yeah, it's pretty damn tangible, and again, it's just so damn easy to enable it. I really wish that the industry hadn't waited for AMD to push this. I do understand that the benefit AMD have had is that they do support, um, not, well, create, excuse me, not just the CPUs, but also the GPUs, as well as the motherboards, which is obviously something NVIDIA don't do. They are not producing x86 CPUs, and Intel haven't had discrete GPUs. Well, of course, they're releasing those uh, next year. Well, I guess next year is going to be in a few days from now, uh, as of the time I'm recording this. So, and that has obviously meant that they have less of a, a push for this technology. They can't just do it holistically like AMD have. But nevertheless, I kind of feel that we've just been losing free performance all of this time. And uh, I'm really happy that NVIDIA will be releasing their update. I'm going to be very interested to test that uh, across different platforms to see what exactly you get. I'll also be testing this feature more extensively too on uh, AMD's own platform. And uh, just kind of doing some messing around, which I really like testing stuff out and just kind of screwing around for you guys. So uh, to me, this is just really cool. It's definitely a feature I would just enable, set it, forget it, and then don't worry about it ever again. Once it's on, it's on. Um, but yeah, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then definitely get subscribed to the channel. And of course, ring the bell icon because YouTube and notifications have this weird history at best but uh, other than that if you did enjoy the video then of course again there is an article about this in the video description which you can go ahead and check out but i think that's just about it for this particular video i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now